and welcome to this session of Identity 2022. I am Matthew Roche, the CEO and co-founder of uh, ID5. And I'm very happy to have Chris Paquette join me today for the session. Hello, Chris. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Thanks so much for having me. No, it's great to have you. We're, we're, we're very excited to uh, have a chance to have that discussion. As you can see in our beautiful background, it's a fireside <laughs> chat here over there. It's a fireside chat with a, vir a virtual fireside chat. Warm, warm uh, setting for a warm, day. cozy warm. winter. Exactly, it's, it's it's totally on brand. Um, and 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 the topic here today is to talk about privacy focused identity, uh, because you know for the people who don't know about Deep Intent, you guys operate in a very kind of regulated industry. So uh, well, first let's let's you know kick things off with like a, a presentation of Deep Intent. Who is Deep Intent? Sure. Uh, so thanks again for having me. You know, Deep Intent is a healthcare DSP, and we are specifically focused on. A couple of different things outside of just being a, another generalist or kind of vanilla DSP. What we do really well at Deep Intent is bring healthcare data into the programmatic context for use in planning, activation, measurement, and optimization. Uh, that's what we do 10x better than everybody else. That's kind of our claim to say, claim to fame, uh, and that's you know what we hang our hat on at the end of the day for how we contribute to the to the ecosystem. So. Healthcare is very specific, as you can imagine, given the sensitivities and regulations with health data. And so what we've done at Deep Intent, we've built a lot of IP around how to bring that data into the, obviously, the digital advertising ecosystem in a privacy-safe, compliant way. Uh, just for context, my background, actually, I come from the healthcare side. I used to work at Memorial Sloan Kettering. I was a data scientist at a cancer hospital here in New York. Uh, and so my background has always been, you know, health data, got my degree. Hand in handling handling health, healthcare data. Handling health data, saw kind of the fragmentation in, in the health data ecosystem, uh, which actually kind of surprisingly is going to somewhat in some predictions that we'll talk about later. I think that kind of balkanization of, of identity and data, it's probably going to be something similar to where we're going in the future. So anyway, super excited for, for what we're doing and in, uh, in this conversation. Cool. And, and uh, how, how, how old is Deep Intent? When did you when did you start a company? Started six years ago. Uh, six years ago. So, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's been so like a, a second, and, second or third generation uh, uh, ad tech company already, and and very kind of data focused uh, from from the from the get go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were we were definitely late to the game as a DSP. I mean, all things considered, we started in 2016, so there was a lot of DSPs already at market. Uh, but the specialization, you know, obviously for healthcare is kind of what we've kind of carved a niche out for, and that's been you know super helpful for our clients. And how how geo how geo specific is it? Do you operate only in the U.S. Or, yeah, today we only operate in the U.S. Okay. Um, and you know, there's obviously every single uh, market has its own regulations around health data, who you can even serve health uh, related ads to. You know, for example, you can't serve patient patient ads in Europe. Just you can't do that, yeah. right? You need DTC. Yeah. So as, as you as you know, uh, so obviously physician targeting is a bit different, right? Here versus versus there. Okay. Okay. And. and and so t tell us about this, this approach that you have to, to data. As you say, highly regulated, uh, that's your unique kind of source. What can, you, what can you tell us about this approach? What makes it so, yeah. so specific and also so kind of uh, uh, um, operating under constraints in a way, right? So difficult. Yeah, so I, I think it's important for people to know kind of how pharma typically sells products, right? And how they sell drugs and get their drugs out in the market. So traditionally, there's been a huge sales force, right? Pharma has sales reps that go into the doctor's offices to drop off samples, educate the physicians. Hey, I have a new drug. This is what it treats. These are the indications. This is how you prescribe it. This is where you can get it. Um, and so that has been kind of for decades, the status quo of how pharma has typically sold their product into new markets, whether it's a new launch, you know, they, have, they activate this, you know, tens of thousands of, of uh, sales reps across the country, they bring the drug in, they educate the physicians. So what happened was, you know, there's always been an interest in this idea of omni-channel marketing, right? And I think well before COVID, that was a big thing. But then once COVID hit, that's when we really saw the kind of onset of really the drop-off of in-office in physician uh, uh, touch bases, right? So technically, as a physician, you, or you were not allowed, right? You just weren't letting sales reps in. Anybody who wasn't absolutely critical to treating a patient was not going to be in the office during COVID. Uh, so that kind of change in dynamic really definitely kind of started to, uh, you know, when, when all of a sudden you have a channel that totally turns off, that in-person in sales rep turns off, they only could go to digital, right? So what we saw in Deep Intent was this massive deluge of, of interest from kind of using more traditional channels to activate and sell, you know, pharma product 
and come into the digital context, right? And come into the digital platform. So deep intent, you know, kind of right place, right time. We had built uh, arguably the best uh, one-to-one physician targeting platform. And the, the interest here and kind of the, the specificity or why deep intent, why you can't do this on another platform, another DSP, is that we've built our own identity graph all keyed off what is the NPI, the National Provider ID number. That's kind of the social security number, if you will, public uh, for every single prescribing individual in the country. And so what we have is we have every MPI tied to every email address through a series of partners who collect that data on an opt-in consented basis. And so what we did is we took that data, onboarded it, right, and made that act- activatable within the, uh, within the program. The, the, deep intent, uh, the deep intent DSP. That's right. Okay, that's that's really fascinating. How how um how can you give us any idea of that? You, you talked about that shift or that acceleration. Um, um, do you have any numbers supporting that the 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 notion that the market shifted to like an in person sale to a digital sale? I mean, it's obvious, but just just yeah. kind of as a, a you know, as, I mean, we, we saw sales reps were not allowed in for over eighty percent of offices ar- around the country, right? And so that just we saw literally entire entire specialties just drop off, right? Like there were no in-person meetings in that kind of March, April, May period, right when COVID first hit. Of course, things have started to come back, but pharma, the marketers have always been inclined to do a natural test, right? Or do yeah. a test of some sort, which this provided yeah. a natural test to do it. What would happen if we just took all the sales reps out of the field? And could digital actually replace a lot of that? You know, what they found was, Indeed, it actually it actually does work pretty well. Actually, does work. Yeah, yeah. real real so, life real life A/B testing. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> it's those, those those natural tests. I think COVID provided that for a lot of industries, but for us specifically in the healthcare provider marketing space, that was a natural test that you know just happened to happen uh, here uh, in the U.S. at least. Okay, really really interesting. Yeah. Um, so let's let's dig a bit more into this uh, this this uh, uh, identity graph that you guys have built. Keyed off the uh, the NP, NPI, you said. Yeah, that that's correct for for the, <laughs> for the healthcare provider side. We, healthcare provider. Talk yet about the the patient side, but I'm sure that will come up later. Yeah, I'm sure it will. <laughs> how many? Just give us an idea. How many? How many uh, uh, national uh, uh, kind of um, uh, prescribers are they in the U.S.? Is yeah, so there's a, in our platform, there's 1.6 million that you can access on a one-to-one basis at any given time. Uh, and so every day we see about 75% of them active online with an opportunity to serve an ad in front of them. And that spans between any channel, so any connected device, whether it's a cell phone, a laptop, a connected TV, uh, audio streaming, any, any device that we can serve an ad to, that's how we have it, have it connected. Um, okay, so seventy-five percent of one point six million. So you know, I mean, it's it's a big number, but we know with like you know, if you compare that to like a, I don't know a Ford or a or a or a you know, like it's it's a it's an it's a very niche audience that you're trying to reach, right? Needle in the needle in the haystack. Right? Needle in the haystack, very <laughs> valuable needle, but still big haystack. <laughs> exactly, and, that, and that's reflected, you know, obviously in the pricing and, and how you know how you can access that. So when we buy an ad for a healthcare provider. We typically win that placement, right? Because yeah. that is such a high value individual for the, especially yeah, for course. the ad products that we're, that we're serving and trying to raise awareness of. Um, so yeah, you know, our platform and, and you asked the question kind of how, how it all works. You know, we, our philosophy of Deep Intent has always been about kind of this hub and spoke model. So basically being agnostic to the different sorts of data providers, identity data providers, even the clinical data providers. I mean, we have the idea of this notion of a, of a hub being the actual individual. Mm-hmm. And so that usually is some sort of offline representation that's stable over time. Yep. Uh, and then we use various different partners uh, to help make those spokes to connect them into uh, CTV or to connect- yeah, or them a to computer them. or yeah, exactly. A cookie ID or a, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, clear, very yeah. clear. And, yeah. and, um, and so what, what are some of the challenges that you face because of this kind of needle in a haystack approach, right? Like how is, is there, is there a specific kind of inventories that you're, that you're kind of have to connect into that are kind of complicated to get into or, or she talked about a bit about this kind of bidding strategy, which is I'm, I'm assuming like you're, you're, you're bidding quite high to make sure that you can reach those users. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that complexity? Because it's, I'm sure, I mean, a lot of brands and, 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 and publishers who are listening to us are like, well, I have this kind of niche audience that I need to reach into as well. What, what can they learn from you guys? 
Yeah, you know, um, what we've seen is that there's always been kind of the traditional, and again, when I say always, I mean, this is digital always, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, three, you know, three months ago. <laughs> three months ago, right? I mean, there are there are the, you know, kind of endemic, health care endemic publishers of research articles, the websites like a Healthline or, uh, or like a WebMD, Medscape. Like these are kind of the, you know, tentpole type of, or I would say, have been the tentpole type of placements and publishers for healthcare professional marketing. I think since 2016, 2017, when we started Deep Intent, we started to see this shift where marketers used to only buy digital from those major publishers, right? And then all of a sudden programmatic with its audience-based buying kind of value proposition, all of a sudden you realize that you could find an eight, X, an eight times cheaper impression on a, on a still a very valuable website, like a New York Times or yep. another non-endemic uh, you know, publisher website that all of a sudden the economics just you know, totally different scale, right? Yep. So you can buy more of that valuable FaceTime with that audience on you know, another, another platform that just isn't you know, as highly premiumed, right? Yep. As a, or place with a high price premium as such, something like a WebMD, right? Okay. So we did see this kind of seismic shift happen within the last five to six years where pharma has been more and more open. And I think that's been reflected in our growth and other healthcare DSP growths uh, just over that period of time where it's like, yeah, well, you know, I'm still getting the performance uh, whether it's on this channel or this, this publisher, albeit I can buy more of it. Right. And even if you play the slot machine, right. You buy, you know, 10, 10 ads here is equivalent to one ad here. You're still going to get more value out of those 10 ads than you would have one on the yeah. others. So um yeah, so you know, we we definitely have seen these dynamic shifts, and uh, pharma has always been more uh, traditional, right, in their their approach to put it lightly. I think you know that's always been just a product of who they are uh, as as an industry. But it's been great to see, you know, for an industry that's been four to five years kind of lagging the rest of the advertising ecosystem with programmatic, they're now, I think personally, I think they're at the forefront of some of the most, more exciting things with measurement identity and some of these really 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 interesting opportunities to make digital advertising better. Okay. Before we, we, we deep dive into the, the identity play in particular, what kind, of, what kind of data do you onboard? What, what can buyers find on the Deep Intent platform to be able to qualify their audience? What, what, give, us, give us an idea of that. Yeah, so uh, important to remember that we have kind of two businesses, right? We have a healthcare provider business or an audience, right? Yep. And we have yep. the patient side. So I'll talk first about the healthcare. Okay. Yep. Um, you know, that is a very kind of straightforward one-to-one, -one, you know, hey, I want to target, you know, buyers come to us or our advertisers come to us. They say, hey, I need to reach the top 10,000 prescribing physicians for this drug or the top 5,000 diagnosing physicians for this condition. Okay. Uh, either they have that data on um, the prescribing the market data about who those physicians are, mm -hmm. or they come to us where what we've done is we've taken that MPI and we've married it to qualified it. Yeah. We've qualified it through healthcare claims data, uh, which is different, right? So like we don't actually have any patient data in our platform, which is a very important notion, right? For us where we can actually segment the physician, which is totally fine. Okay. Often they're prescribing, they're treating, they're diagnosing behaviors. So we can say, Hey, if you're looking for a COPD audience in the U.S. in New York, we can C COPD. I'm not familiar with COPD. Sorry. It's, uh, basically, it's like a really bad asthma. Right? Okay. So, okay. All right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's a breathing condition. Okay. Um, basically, yeah. So if you don't have, if you don't know who those physicians are, we help. We bring that data to you, and then allow them to say, you know, here are the top thousand that I want to reach. Okay. And then with one click, you can start, you know, activating campaigns against that that set of a thousand physicians. So. Again, it's very, it's kind of like this, this intersect between health data and programmatic, you know, ads data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have built a platform for planning, activation, haven't talked about measurements and optimization yet, but we'll get there. Um, and then on the other side, on the patient side, you know, that's kind of where a lot of the very interesting work has been when it comes to identity, uh, different sorts of machine learning, differential privacy. Um, again, thinking about my data, wearing my data science hat, this yeah. has been my my favorite part, if you will, kind of having built this company, um, you know, we've invested a lot in the use of machine learning and specific properties of machine learning to make it hard to re-identify individuals. Um, so think of it somewhat similar to like a cohort, right? Where we look at patterns uh, in clinical data uh, and we find, hey, you know, where for certain demographics, 
what are the, what are the prevalence of certain types of disease? So for example, if I'm looking for a type two diabetes audience, for whatever reason, maybe men who are over 55 in the Northeast who drive a red car are over indexed with yep. that, that condition. So what we do is we take that data in those insights, we bump that up against demographic data that exists in you know, the programmatic online advertising yep. world. Yep. Uh, and so then we execute buys against those indexes. Right? So look, look, look like modeling with yeah. like a, a, a seed of kind of clinical data. clinical data and kind of healthcare relevant data. Okay. And then it's a very different dynamic because basically everybody's a patient. So like you're, it, it's, it's the entire haystack that you're looking to get to, right? There's no need yes. anymore. Everybody's yes. potentially a, a patient. It's just a matter of like, well, what's the, what's the best message? It's more of a messaging optimization than a, than a, uh, yeah, I, I, there's optimization or? It, it depends on the condition, right? So like everybody's a patient, but not for every condition, right? So yeah, if you want exactly, to, uh, there's some level of like audience targeting, yes. And then some obviously with a creative as well. Um, but it really kind of depends on what, you know, what you're promoting. Is there, is it a new treatment? Is it a new drug? Uh, or is it something like a clinical trial where there's a lot more sensitivity to like actually making sure you have the right patient more highly qualified than just, you know, turning on a, you, you turn on your TV and see, you know, uh, if you watch local yeah. news, you'll see how many formats it's really exactly. targeted. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's spe specifically linear TV, not, not, not connected TV. <laughs> we'll get to it. Uh, but, but, uh, but no, I mean, that's, you know, that's really the opportunity. It's like the idea of like, we can make the advertising experience better. Hopefully users are going to see less pharma ads that aren't relevant to them. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that's mm -hmm. also the goal. It's more, more about yeah, it, it, reducing wastage really than kind of pinpointing like one to one because in the end it's a it's a mass market anyway. So you need you need to be able to reach a, a, a big group of the audience. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Understood. All right. So let's let's talk a bit about a bit more a bit about your uh, your ID graph approach. Uh, sure. And and so my understanding is that it's very different between the prescribers and the patients, right? Are they sure. completely separate platforms, or have you do you have like some form of kind of combination within within deep intent yeah yeah so uh it's two very different workflows within our our you know kind of our platform right so uh okay. so it's one dsp you know for both um that said you know how we curate and master that data is different right so we partner for the provider side we have different sorts of publishers uh data providers that maintain those mappings of mpi to email address or mpi to other identifier uh, and then we take those other identifiers right and try to make them biddable, right? So we kind of have this idea of like biddable IDs and then offline IDs, so online yep. and offline. Yep. Uh, and so what we've done is we've invested a lot in how do we bridge the offline to the online, working with partners such as ID5, right? So how do we find those other opportunities, other, other signals through onboarders and different ID platforms like an yep. ID. Yep. Uh, and so that's why it's important that we kind of maintain a level of ag agnosticness, right? In the way that we uh, build that. To some degree, but of course, you know, we see strengths in different pockets, different geos of certain providers, right? So like uh, CTV has a different profile of like who's yep. strong in that than, than a, you know, kind of a mobile or, or a desktop, right? Open web type of experience. So yeah. yeah it, it, how many, how many, how many partners are you, do you have to bring together to have, you know, a, a good enough coverage of the population that you want to reach for today? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, we have worked with about half a dozen right now. Okay. Uh, and so that's going to continue to expand as we look at different markets, because we have to look at every different, every different, uh, every different, market. different channels and different geos. And yeah, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. and we actually, and it's a great question too, because we also recognize the value of first party data, right? So one of the big decisions we made strategically last year was to create the opportunity, this idea or this product called audience marketplace, uh, where we're working now with publishers who have data emails or other sorts of consented opted in data where they can bring that to us, right? Where they say, Hey, here's uh, this physician or here's this individual, here's their email. And then through that process, we work with our onboarding partners like you, right? To help bridge that back. And so now publishers yep. can start to contribute their first party data for, you know, healthcare advertising yep. on our platform, which is great. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it makes total sense because in the end, they're getting more of your spend. If their users are more visible to you guys, then it's a, it's a positive kind of uh, a feedback loop. And, and yeah, of course. Yep. Okay. Um, so let, let's talk about the, uh, the, um, the, 
And and yeah, how is that different between the pro the providers and the and the and the patients? How do you how do you approach patients uh, uh, yeah. on that front again? Great question. Yeah. So on the patient side, it's a little different, right? So we use uh, consumer, basically consumer demographic data sets. Uh, we partner with Epsilon. Epsilon's a great partner of ours. We're again agnostic to the types of data we have on on that side. But again, if you think of that hub and spoke model, the consumer demographic data and those kind of consumer IDs makes the kind of spine of our of our patient graph. And so again, thinking about the way we actually activate against that. We look at demographics, right? So demographics are very important. It's how we bridge kind of clinical insights back into the online world. Kind of okay. thinking about that, that yeah, same yeah. example I provided, right? Um, so yeah, those men, 55 in the Northeast, right? Relevant for this condition. Yeah. That's how yeah. we do it. And okay. so once, once you're targeting like an Epsilon core ID, for example, that's yeah. easy, right? And then they're yeah. all over the place. So uh, you can do that. And we never know. The, the important thing is that we have a firewall between the clinical data and the health and the uh, ad, ad serving data, right? Yeah. And that firewall is kind of using machine learning, right? To make sure that yeah. we're never gonna be able to re-identify that someone being targeted online actually has a specific condition that basically re-identify them back in the clinical world. Um, and that's been, you know, we actually were just awarded a patent for that, uh, that process, uh, or I think actually just was awarded at the end of the year. So yeah, you're oh, the first one to know about it. So I, <laughs> there you go. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're earlier than the press release then. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, but yes, no, it's, uh, it's super exciting. And again, that, that area of, of machine learning, AI privacy is all very relevant. I think for, you know, yeah. this industry going forward. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it, the, the the world of like uh, deterministic identification as is probably coming to an end and and so it's just machine learning and identity are becoming kind of one and the same because overall it's more about uh, uh, you know having enough of an enough certainty enough guarantees but we we don't have even in even in the in the in the, the creation of the 85 IDs right there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of probabilistic approaches just because that's that's how we're going to be structuring the world going forward uh, yeah. uh, and and I think when when you look at data, obviously, right, all of the modeling, all of the look like modeling that 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 you guys are doing is, of course, powered by algorithm. But even at the at the identity level, and there's a lot of benefits to it, as you say, non kind of impossible to go back to the original ID in the first place. That's that's a good one. We, we work a lot on permissioning as well. Yeah, it's becoming. I mean, for a data scientist like you, it must be. Uh, it must feel like uh, yeah, it, it, the, the day has come, right? Finally, <laughs> day has come. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm I'm now managing more than I am actually in the weeds. So, but that's that's my problem. But no, it's I'm, been sure, great. <laughs> I, I'm sure you're still spending a lot of time in the data set yourself. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have my uh, my IDs fired up, and I can uh, query the data still. So that's my my mark of uh, still being able to get get it done. You know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's interesting. And, you know, I think for, you know, the idea of, and I think just to ride on what you were saying about having, you know, the ability to do targeting in a non-deterministic way, you know, when Flock came out and that proposal was yep. kind of kicked around as being the leading contender, I mean, we had actually been able to come up with a way where we were actually still going to be able to do patient modeling, right, or patient targeting against Flock cohort IDs. And so that level of flexibility, it doesn't really matter what the ID is in the online world, as long as you can find a way to connect it back in a privacy safe way back to your seed data set for lookalike targeting. So yep. that idea, you know, I think there's so much opportunity in this, in that specific area of kind of privacy and, and like you said, data science, machine learning, that yep. it's only going to become more and more interesting, especially as we look at different proposals from like Mozilla, Meta, Critio, yep. Trade Desk, like everybody's working really hard on this problem. Yeah. Uh, what, what would you say are the, the key kind of, uh, um, the key uh, USBs that you're looking to to get to, obviously, kind of privacy compliance, obviously, kind of scale. Right? What what are some of the other kind of uh, uh, arguments that you're looking when when you're looking at people like ID5 or kind of other ID providers and, and people who are helping you basically execute on your yeah. promise to to uh, to uh, to uh, kind of form form advertisers? What are the things that you're looking for specifically or, or precisely to to see? Like, yep, this is someone we want to work with. Yeah, so we're looking for strength in areas that have, well, two things, strength in just the approach, right? And one thing that really impressed me about ID5 was just the approach of being able to have both deterministic and probabilistic, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, set up and also having kind of publisher direct relationships. I think that is so important. 
Uh, I personally like thinking about long-term where it's going to go. First party data is, I mean, those IDs are not going to go away, right? Uh, New York Times can collect, uh, you know, emails, subscriber data. That's that first party data is going to be highly valuable, by, valuable and highly coveted, right? So I, I think that what ID5 has done, they have a technically sound and uh, commercially sound approach that it makes a lot of sense for why we would want to partner, right? Because in the future, yes, this kind of server to server type approach does make sense in my mind, kind of being somewhat technical uh, from my background. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think other there's others out there that are a little shaky. <laughs> and so I'm <laughs> obviously going to say those. But there's other methodologies that like I just for some reason, I can't wrap my head around, nor do I feel comfortable thinking that that is going to be privacy, safe compliance with regulation. Like that's you know, those boxes have to be checked in my mind where it's all about consent. Pri privacy, compliant consent, yeah. uh, 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 scale. Would you say scale is still an issue? Is still something that you're looking to get? Because you, you said yeah. you're working with six, six people in that space, right? I mean, if you if you need to work with 10, 15, 20, 60, 100 to, to get to a decent scale, it's useless. So you probably want to concentrate around. Yeah. Deduplicating the kind yeah. of, uh, you know, kind of the overlap is something that we look at. It's certainly that's something that we try to uh, we try to manage. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're kind of in this point where, you know, we have to put a lot of stakes into the fire to make sure that we, uh, you know, can evaluate them even right and evaluate new ID providers. Um, so yeah, it, you know, I think right now we're kind of, we're bloating, right. But then all of a sudden, you know, when, you know, time does come, we'll, 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 we'll trim it down. We'll make sure that we have the, uh, robust and, 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 and the market will consolidate naturally, right. It's a, it's a, it right. has to be a consolidated market by default. It cannot be, it cannot be a, a, a you cannot have hundred, it's a currency, right. And a currency is only valuable if it's scalable. And if it's, if it's, uh, if it's, uh, uh, used by a, a large part of the, of the industry, otherwise it, it doesn't work. Right. So. Currency is the right word. It has to be something that you can trade in and be, yep. it needs to power the economy, right? And that's yep. also what currency does. So um, we we do, uh, you know, we feel very strongly that ID5 is a, is a great contender uh, for, for the future too. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, so let's talk about 2022, where we're at the beginning. So this yeah. is recorded on, on the 10th. Uh, obviously you guys are, are watching it on the 26th, but still, right, it's early in the year. Uh, uh, what are you looking forward to? It's going to be a, a busy year for for advertising and advertising technology in general, with with a lot of things that are kind of in the in in the in in the process of migrating to a new identity world, a new data management world, right? New regulations coming into play. Um, anything like in that space, and maybe in pharma in general, right? That are going to be critical for Deep Intent in 2022. Yeah, I mean, we have a, a lot. Right now, going on in our in our product pipeline, and I'm sure my product team is listening to this, and they're they're happy that uh, I'm uh, not committing to anything necessarily. Right? Exactly. Now, but... Don't add anything. <laughs> to <the list. laughs> but uh, no, I mean we we've always been very aggressive with with product and, and the products we build, and I mean, we we built a lot of tech. Um, where I see the next, you know, this year specifically, you know, I think we've had the years of mobile, right? We've had the years, right? That that's kind of been been there in the past, but I really think this year, especially for pharma. It's going to be the year of connected television. So uh, we have a lot of product that we are building specifically to support the four and a half billion dollar uh, you know industry that is pharma advertising in the U.S. and, and television. That's going to that share shifting is going to happen in a very profound way and just continue to accelerate uh, you know over to connected television. Um, audiences just aren't in linear as, as prevalent as they were beforehand, right? And so, yeah, especially uh, since uh, two years ago, right? Uh, the, exactly. A lot of people have moved over there, so that's that. There, that's been an accelerating factor for you guys. Correct, correct. Yeah. And and so what we've done is we've both on the commercial side, partnerships as well as tech uh, and data. We are building a set of tools, right, and integrations that are going to make it really easy for farm markets to apply all the same technology that we've built in the open web. You know, for some of the use cases I mentioned before about planning, about activation, uh, we didn't talk much about measurement and optimization, but that's another big area uh, as of last year, right? That we can actually start to calculate the script lift, right? Or prescribing behavior change of physicians on our platform too, which has been, you know, definitely game changing for a lot of clients. Um, but we're going to take all those same cap capabilities and convert that over into the connected TV space and do that in a very robust way. Um, and so there's obviously different challenges there. You have household level targeting, IP level targeting, right? It, it's yep. very different, uh, but it's still going to be, it's the idea is that the smoother we can make that transition where it's CTV is just yet another channel within the overall programmatic 
uh, kind of repertoire uh, of, of inventory, then the easier it'll be because now you can orchestrate cross-channel uh, buys across any. And, and also the, the 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 data, like the intelligence that you get on on one end, can be used on the other end, right? There's there's I'm I'm, I'm assuming the platform, the the data, kind of the underlying data intelligence can be deployed across all channels, right? That's right. Yeah. And, and so it's critical that we have the ability to do, you know, basically some level of when we actually place the ad, we know an individual of who we're serving the ad to, because then we link that back to, again, through different sorts of machine learning and uh, obfuscation capabilities. We actually link that back into the clinical realm and we say, oh yeah, well, we actually ended up reaching out of the, you know, 10,000 uh, households, uh, 3,000 of them actually had a type two diabetes patient. Right. And these are kind of the publishers that did well or the creatives that did well, right? Or the geos. And we yeah. take that back and then we put that back into the DSP. Right. And so now we have this optimization yeah, yeah. kind of flywheel that, that with, we've built on with, our platform. With channel being like a new dimension that you can use to kind of slice and dice data and performance. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's that that's fascinating. Unfortunately, we're at time, but uh, but it was a really, really exciting chat. Thanks a lot for uh, for uh, taking the time to speak with us by that beautiful fire. <laughs> fireplace uh, 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 and to participate in Identity 2022. Um, so thank you, Chris, and uh, thank you, uh, uh, listeners and 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 uh, watchers, uh, for your time and enjoy the rest of the Identity 2022 program. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.